recording. So we'll see what happens. Um, so I'm going to pull the hive apart and I'm going to insert a, a piece of drawn comb or a frame full of drawn comb into the hive. This is, this is just an empty frame but the bees have uh, made comb on, on the frame so it's all empty cells so they can just, the queen can lay in it or they can fill it up with honey or they can do whatever they want with it. And I'm doing this because about a week ago I added a frame a foundationless frame because I, I wanted them to make some some drone comb and they usually make drone combs and in, uh, in the foundationless frames and then I checked out the foundationless frame and they hadn't touched it so um, I'm getting rid of it now and the only reason I'm getting rid of it now instead of earlier is just the weather the weather was crappy earlier it was all cold and miserable and the other thing is today which should be fun I'm doing this with minimal protection. I have no, no, um, no gloves on. And now uh, let's see how the bees are underneath this. Oh, they're okay. I'm gonna spray them down with a little bit of water. So this is all, this is all without smoke. Just, a, just a mist. And uh, if I get stung in the, uh, if I get stung, you're gonna know because I'm gonna run away. Problem. So far, so good. And the first thing I'm gonna do is uh, remove that middle frame, which is the foundation of this frame. They may, if they're working this frame, I'm just gonna leave it alone. I'm gonna just, uh, I'm not gonna mess with them, especially since I don't have any gloves on. Now, a lot of people do beekeeping without gloves, but I've never done that. see. All right, so they're starting to work that that middle frame. I don't know how well you can see it, but they're building comb off that foundationless frame, so I'm going to leave them alone. That's pretty cool though. So I'll come back here in a week and that should fill that, that should, most of that should be filled up. And I'm glad to see that happening. So that should prevent them from, if there was any kind of swarming instinct kicking in, that gives the bee something else to do other than build swarm cells and uh, and it's sort of it's, it's a way of preventing swarming if swarming is an issue but I can look at these bees right now and tell you there's just not many bees in this hive so they're not a lot they're not crowded anyway so that's it beekeeping done <laughs> don't mess with the bees that was anticlimactic but there it is. I could have taken a picture of the frame, but I'll take a picture next week. I've got this piece of metal. Just I could have used a piece of wood, but I don't have a piece of wood. And I've got the hole there in the inner, inner, in the inner cover for ventilation, but I don't think they need, right now, I think they could use the extra heat that's provided by plugging up the hole. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna give them that extra heat. Okay, good, done. Couple ants. But anyway, there you go. Beekeeping 101 made simple. And I didn't get stung. Hey, nice. So I'll try that again. I'm going to keep going with this gloveless thing. A lot of people do it. But uh, I've had mean bees in the past that sort of prevent me from going down that road. But they've got enough resources to make start building comb down that foundationless frame, so I'm just going to leave them alone. I saw some queen cups the last time, which queen cups are sort of like, uh, it's a precursor to swarming, but it, but not necessarily. It's only if they need to swarm. And I think, I just don't think there's enough bees in this hive for them to, to start swarming. I could be completely wrong. Usually as soon as you think you're right about something like this, that's usually when you're wrong. But I'm just, and, and it's usually safer and better to just inspect them if you have any doubt, to look for swarm cells, which I'm not doing, so we'll see what happens. Okay, and uh, that was from July 3rd, 2017 in Flat Rock, and it's uh, November 2019 as I record this 
partial narration, and these are just some photographs of uh, foundationless frames and some drawn comb that I probably took just as for future reference. So let's get on with it. Okay. Um, what we have here are just some bees coming and going from the top entrance of the hive. And you can't, I don't know if I'm in the shot here, but down below the hive, that entrance is a bottom entrance, and the bees are pretty much ignoring that bottom entrance. Well, I just want to see if I can get them to notice that bottom entrance. Um, just because, why not? <clears throat> I don't want them to ignore the, the frames down there. They're probably fine. This is probably just another human messing around with the bees when you should just leave them alone. But um, I'm going to do a little test. It's only going to take a minute. And uh, the test is, uh, involves blocking up that top entrance and seeing how many bees get clogged up trying to come into that entrance uh, once I block it up. Uh, the purpose is to basically count how many bees are coming and going. Um, supposedly, if you have um, about 100 bees coming and going within a minute, or at least returning from foraging within one minute, you're, you've got a healthy hive on the go. And I think that's what we've got here, but we're just gonna, just gonna test it out just to see how quickly they, they, they pile up. So I'm gonna just put these little screens on them over the entrance, and I'm going to try not to get stung, try not to piss off any bees. There we go. Oh. <clears throat> now right now they can still get through that mesh, but I'm going to put another one on, and it's going to definitely clog them up. Oops, 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 oops. I'm just trying not to kill any bees while I do this. Okay, here we go. That's done. All right, they shouldn't be able to get in or out. Maybe a little, yeah, there's still a few that can get in and out. They're gonna clog up right here. There's a little hole right there they can get into, but the rest of them, they can't get in. So let's just give it a minute and see how quickly those bees pile up on the top of that entrance there. There's a little, yeah, there's one little tiny square where they can get through. <clears throat> hold on, I might be able to just, hold on, I'll just plug that up with a stick. Right there's where we can get in. Yeah, that should do it. I'm just getting out of the way in case I'm pissing them off. Okay, I'm just gonna leave them alone and see how long they, they can handle that. Oh no, they, they, that's well anyway, they can still get to that one hole, but. We'll just see. This, is, this will be a pretty good test. Oh boy, they're really getting in there, actually. <laughs> and then I'll do another video, just record them in slow motion. So I don't even think it's been a minute. And I would say easily, there are definitely a hundred bees clogging up trying to get into this hive right now. And they're still getting in, I'd say, at a rate of... Yeah, there's still about one every second coming in and out of the hive. So I'm, I'm, I've slowed them down, but I haven't slowed them down. Wow, they're really squeezing to get in. Actually, some of them are getting through. Wow, crazy. They're so determined. So... I don't know what I was thinking doing this, but um, you know, it's kind of neat. It's a harmless little thing test to do with the bees. You just clog up the entrance and, uh, oh, now we're in slow-mo. Uh, clog up the entrance just for a minute and see how many bees get, get uh, clogged up at the, uh, at the entrance as the bees are trying to get in. And uh, it gives you a sense of just how vigorous the colony is. And um, I don't even know why I did this test this day because it was clearly, a, they're, they're doing fine. They're just, they're crowding. This was, a, it was an interesting hive though. It, it, it seemed to favor the top entrance and ignore the bottom entrance. And, um, but the brood was still on the bottom, in the bottom of the hive, not the top. So I don't know what's going on. But uh, this is a little slow-mo stuff. And this is, again, this is sort of, a lot of this, these cell phone chronicles are, have just cell phone shots of things that I didn't use in my regular videos. And that's sort of what this is. That's 
But anyway, you gotta be pretty dedicated to watch through all this stuff. Okay, I just did a full inspection of this hive and I reversed the brood boxes. So all the brood is in the bottom of this hive now. And um, the brood frames that I saw, they looked good. Full frames of brood, I mean, right edge to edge frames of brood. But overall, I would say there's only about uh, five, six, or seven frames of brood, which is where they should have been at least a month ago. So they're a little bit behind, but the queen seems to be laying well. Um, there is uh, a lot of honey, and um, I think when I gave them the sugar syrup earlier, a few weeks ago or a month ago, whenever that was, I didn't need to do that. And um, <clears throat> because the queen, she has room to lay, but she doesn't have a lot of room to lay. So I pulled out two frames of honey and I replaced them with um, two drawn, empty drawn combs. So that gives the queen room to lay top and bottom. And the, the foundationless frame that I put in there was, uh, they're filling that in pretty quick too. But I should have taken pictures of this or videotaped it, but I forgot. I just didn't have time to do it or whatever. Didn't have time to set up the camera. But anyway, they're looking okay. Oh, and so I... <clears throat> They're a little bit disoriented right now because their, uh, their entrance, which used to be right here, but it used to look different, they're all, they're all queued into the, the entrance, which used to be right down here in this inner cover, which I removed. So they're all, you know, uh, honed in on that visual cue of the inner cover hole. Now it's gone, and now they're all just landing and wondering what's going on. So they'll start, eventually they'll start scenting once they figure out this is the way in, and they'll start scenting at the entrance, and... Uh, and then they'll all eventually figure it out. But it'll, they'll be a little disoriented for, for the next, you know, half hour or so. Anyway, I, I don't think there's any danger of these bees uh, swarming. Um, I don't think there's any... I don't know if I'm even going to get any honey out of them this year. I could probably... The smart thing to do would be just to put another deep on top with some drawn comb and some honey and stuff and just leave it to it for them. And they would probably expand into that and make a huge hive and all kinds of fun stuff, but <clears throat> I'm going to try to go for honey this year, so let's just see what happens. I might get some honey in, in the fall. That's it. And uh, I had the smoker lit over here, and uh, I used um, some wood shavings and newspaper and some moose droppings. And I've done the moose droppings before, and it, it, it burns well. But anyway, I had that on the go, and it's still smoldering, but I didn't use it. I just used my, my mist, misty water instead. Although I did smoke my suit that I'm wearing right now because I recently washed the suit and it sounds smells like, you know, very fragrant and per perfumey, which is not a good smell around bees. So I've been smoking myself just to mask the, uh, the perfumey smell. Anyway, the bees are a little bit... Like right now, they're, they're wondering, where's, the, where's our entrance? And all just hanging out with pollen, trying to get back in. And... Uh, it's funny that they're not really scenting the top entrance yet, but they'll, they'll figure it out. And, uh, oh yeah, so I moved the, uh, the hive. It used to be right there, and I moved it right there, because it's the easiest way to do it without lifting boxes. And so some of them are coming back to this specific area, too. So they're a little bit... The first, they go, all right, no hive. And then they come over here, and they find the hive. And then they find the hive with the wrong entrance hole, so they're really out of whack right now, but it shouldn't take them much longer. This guy's scenting. This guy's starting to scent. Right there in the entrance. We'll figure it out. Whew. Just gonna take a quick look at one of these frames. Okay, this is uh, 2019 me pollen. talking over this. Yep, just pollen. And I don't know what I'm looking for in this, this inspection. I don't know what that means. I hope it doesn't mean they're going <clears> to... <throat> Oops. I hope, it doesn't, I hope they don't fill up the honeysuckle with pollen. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing Better. here. I think I was just looking into... Uh, I don't know. I was just checking to see what the bee. Oh, I know what happened. Right here. I had a honey super on there, and they were in a, they were ignoring the honey super. And then I, anyway, I just fooled around with the honey super a bit. And you can see there, I cut out the part where I added the honey super, the medium box on top. But anyhow, just uh, yeah, don't know what was what. Don't know what I was doing.
let's see what I see if I explain it here. And that's it. We're done. So the only difference now is I got a honey super right here, and I got the um, the rim right above it, and I've got the rim and, and so and I've got a uh, an inner cover as well, and but the entrance is in the back. But anyway, got the inner cover on top of that. I, I figured it would be better just to keep the rim in there because. They, they recognize that rim is their entrance, so they, they can easily adjust to it. And right now they're not having a hard time getting in, so there's no reorientation taking place. I'm really be beginning to rethink how I do everything now that I, you know, am, am compelled to simplify everything I do because I just don't want to deal with, you know, honey supers. When you're adding honey supers and, and, and trying to get honey from your bees is a whole other level of beekeeping. Whereas if you just kept the bees for the joy of keeping the bees and just stole their honey whenever you needed it from the deeps or whatever, that would work too. But, but when you're trying to get an actual deep full of, or an actual box full of honey, it's, it really is a different ball game. And you have different priorities and you, your, your beekeeping priorities and what you do is different. It makes it more complicated. And I, maybe I'll just get rid of that altogether. Um, what I'd like to do is take all my me medium boxes and ch and convert all my hives to just medium boxes because they're light and easier to deal with. But uh, anyway, that'd be down the road. And you can see the bees down here. They're ventilating a bit. And I'm going to... I could open up that entrance so that uh, they don't have to bother ventilating. But right now I think that little bit of ventilation is okay. And I'd rather have them warm down here than cool because this is where the most of the brood is right now and, and it's it's easier to keep the brood warm than it is to risk it chilling the brood and keeping them cold if that makes any sense okay and this is just some uh, slow motion uh, footage of uh, honeybee on some white clover and again this is probably footage that i didn't use before because i couldn't find a place for it or the the slow-mo was just jittery and I couldn't use it for anything, so I just threw it in here and then here we go. Now we get to watch it all over again, or, well, for the first time, and pretty exciting stuff. But anyway, I do like those shots, actually. So, a month from now, uh, all the new brood should be emerging, and we'll know then what, what condition and what state this hive is in. And hopefully we'll have a lot of things in bloom in August. We got a lot of stuff in bloom right now, but or we will have more in bloom. Once those, um, what you call it, uh, fireweed blooms, that'll be great. And if that, if I can get that for August, and these guys, just all the new brood coming in in August, then I might get a little bit of an August September harvest. But right now, these bees, they're barely big enough. A hive that makes lots of honey, when you open it up, it's just full of eyes. It's just full of bees. The bees are just pouring over every frame, they're all over the slave place, they come out and they're crawling all over you, they're just, they're not necessarily aggressive, but there's just, they're just tons of bees, lots and lots of bees, and this hive is definitely not that, you open it up and you just see a few bees here and there, and they're not sparse, but they're, they're not crowding the frames, so they've got, they've got some ways to go before they're going to really produce honey in a big way. <coughs> um, other beekeepers at this time of year are seeing lots of honey, seeing lots of, they're having swarm issues and stuff like that, and uh, I'm not getting any of that, so, you know, I kind of like it. I, I might, maybe I'll just stick with this and, um, and never worry about honey again, because, you know, the bees are doing their thing, I can still look at them and have fun, but there's less concern, and there's, there's less to think about, there's less swarming concerns, and there's less Oh, how can I get my production up concerns? Any of that stuff is just, just as long as they're alive and they're doing well enough for themselves and they, this colony will do well enough for itself, then fine, you know, why not? Why not just take it easy? All right, I think she's okay. She's gotten her breath. She got her breath back and she's going to fly away. There she goes. That would have been cool in slow motion. Anyhow, and so she was going right in here. And uh, there's two entrances in this hive, two top entrances. Uh, I open up the top one when it gets really crowded and they get really busy. And then I close it up at night. 
but when I see that mm -hmm. the one entrance isn't enough for them, yeah, just pop it open. I keep repeating myself, but anyway, there you go. Beekeeping. All right, it's about 9 a.m. and it's 20 degrees Celsius, and which is warm, and um, the uh, fireweed is definitely coming in, and um, this is starting to develop into a warm July. Um, last year, July, the average temperature was 15 degrees Celsius, and it was less than that. I think it was the coldest July on record. Um, it was about eight degrees. The bees weren't getting out. It was like winter. And um, there was the July before that was the hottest July on record. And now this is in the past couple of weeks. This July is definitely the, the, the temperatures are definitely gone up. And I bet beekeepers in other parts of the province are having a great time. Um, my bees are still. They're stronger than the average nucleus colony right now, but they're not. They're not. Um, they're looking better. But uh, I don't, I don't, I'm still not sure, uh, they're, they're still not as strong as they normally would be at this time of year, I don't think. Um, but they're starting to look better, and I can tell you why I say they're looking better. Because they're using the bottom entrance. They're not using it for foraging, though, they're just ventilating it, because there's brew down in the bottom box. And they're also a little bit, um, they're a little bit more defensive. Which probably means I, whoop, I got a few chasers right now. Some bees that'll just come right after me and chase after me, <laughs> and I'm ready to run. Uh, yeah, they, see, they're already ventilating, so I might just remove that bottom entrance and uh, let them cool off, because I'd rather have them, it's okay to have them ventilating a little bit. I'd rather have them a little bit hot than a little bit cool, but it's going up to 28 degrees today, and it's probably, the Humidex is probably going to go... Uh, up into the 30s, so they're going to be cooking today, and it's going to be a, uh, uh, no clouds, so it's going to be it's going to be hard on them. So I'm probably going to right away, as soon as I finish my coffee over there, I'm going to pop open that top entrance, and I'm probably going to open up that that bottom entrance too, because they're I, uh, they're already it's nine o'clock and they're already starting to ventilate quite a bit. Okay, these bees are really cooking, and I'm going to give them some relief. I've got my full bee suit on here, but they're really a lot of uh, a lot of uh, ventilation going on here, and really crowded up here. Okay, I don't know what I'm doing with this hive. Um, I'm not really paying attention to any of this as I record this narration. Um, I think they're making honey. Yeah, I said I think they're making honey. So I guess that's good. There they are. You can see them down that frame. Doesn't look like they're making honey to me right now. All right, they're really chilled out. They're not. They're not coming for me. I'd love to pull out one of those frames and see what they're doing, but I don't want to disturb them. You can see them sort of coming back, coming into the, the entrance there. So I don't want to mess with them. Now some of this is orientation flights, but now they've got a a completely open top, a ventilated hive top. So that's going to relieve them of a lot of heat right now, and I'll I'll put the top, the top the regular solid top on later on tonight. Whew! And maybe I didn't need to do that. You know, maybe I just panicked. Because I think maybe I did panic. Because look, now they're totally they don't seem nearly as crowded, but they're still ventilating quite a bit down there. But anyway, that should relieve them of their ventilation duties. And uh, hoo wee, I'm cooking. All right, I'm done. And there's the. Uh Here's a shot of some chickens, and um, this is uh, this has been interesting for me to go back and look at all of this stuff because it's boring for everybody else. But uh, it's interesting to see where my mind goes when I've got only one hive to obsess over, and I'm, you can see I'm doing all kinds of stuff with ventilation and all kinds of stuff. And I probably could have just put a third deep on that hive and forgot about it. You can see. Let's just see if we can see bees. See, they're landing on it. And they're taking off from it. Especially the ones that are landing. They're the, they're the ones that I'm trying to save a bit here. Come on, baby. There we go. 
So it gives them, sometimes they get to the entrance and they, they're so exhausted they just go poof and they fall to the ground. But instead of falling to the ground now, they've got a place to rest. A well-ventilated screen landing board. There we go. Yeah, look, that's working. Simple and cheap. And I didn't have to do any carpentry, nothing like that. Just stick a little screen underneath and boom, landing pad. <clears throat> Here's something you don't see every day. I've got the uh, sprayer and I've got it sprayed. I got it set to, uh, you know, whatever you call that, narrow spray. And I'm spraying the side of the hive down a bit because it's a hot day. And right now they're going to react like it's like it's raining. But once they realize it's not raining, they're going to have some some water to drink and cool off. So they can just go out and get all the water that's just dripping down the side of the hive or sticking to the hive. That'll help them cool off. Okay, now if you look closely at this little droplet of water close to the, where that I'm sort of zooming in on, you'll see the bee stick its tongue into that droplet of water and the water will disappear as the bee sucks it down. And there, it's out of focus, but there it goes. There it goes, 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 and gone. All the water's gone. So there you go. And this shot is, I think I just uh, increased the contrast so you could see, or the brightness, so that you could see all the bees clustering, hanging off the bottom bars. There's, I always take that as a good sign. Um, it just means that there's lots of brood. Yeah, trying to keep warm, or the bees are trying to keep the brood warm, and that that was a shot of some uh, fireweed. So that was coming in around the 20th of July, and this is a shot, a slow mo shot of the bees, which I think is actually really cool. But you can see it skips; it's going, it it it, it jitters. There's a jitter or whatever you want to call it, a little digital skip in the playback every three seconds. So I couldn't use it uh, for my regular beekeeping stuff. So. Uh, it looks cool. Would have been a cool shot, but it's just, uh, and this is the problem with the, uh, the Samsung Galaxy S7, is uh, it starts off great, but it, it quickly uh, loses its ability to hold that, uh, to buffer that, um, that slow motion footage. It looks to me like there's, that's almost like a swarmy hive. Oh man, this isn't a swarmy hive. <laughs> it's a lot of, it's a, it looks like a lot of bees, but it isn't. Anyway. Hopefully nothing bad's gonna happen. This is again okay, this is a weird experiment. I'm just sort of shooting with my fake GoPro and my cell phone and I put them together and the resolution isn't too good and I really don't know what the point of this whole inspection was. I think it was just looking to see if there's any kind of swarm stuff going on, but I was also recovering from a concussion at the time, so I couldn't lift I couldn't do anything really. I couldn't do any heavy lifting at all. And I could only do stuff like this on days when I was uh, just feeling physically stronger than usual, and it wasn't very often. And uh, yeah, so yeah, I don't know what's going on with this. But it also gives you an example of of the really what beekeeping is like most of the time. People see <coughs> they always get they see things like the flow hive, and and they watch uh, various beekeeping documentaries and movies where people are rubbing the bees into their mustache and uh, the bees are all wonderful and gentle and god oh they, these beekeepers are also in touch with their nature and all that fun stuff and it's you know there's there is something some of that going on but really it's all pretty pretty boring stuff like this uh, really not the most exciting um, I don't know it's not as I think there's a lot of uh, uh, misperceptions about beekeeping and I think anyone who can actually sit through these cell phone chronicles as I'm calling them um, you're doing good because this is really what beekeeping is it's like most of the time it's just yeah I'm gonna pull that top off I'm gonna see what the bees are doing I'm gonna pull a few frames I'm gonna sweat a lot uh, I'm gonna freak out once in a while because you, sometimes you don't know what the bees are doing uh, you know it's um it's it's a bunch work of bees on the bottom of that thing. It's work like this. It's this kind of thing. And 
now they've got two entrances there. Let's just see if they can. I think these bees were actually pretty, um, pretty calm, pretty relaxed. I've had mean bees in the past, and these bees are, you can see they're just so intent on doing what they're doing that they're really not, well, that's a cool shot. I think I've got, I have a footage of this shot that's in a higher resolution, and it's, I, I, it's a cool shot, um, but anyhow. Here we go. There's a load of bees clumped together here. You can even see them festooning. Mm -hmm. I don't know what's going on there, but this is what happens when you mess with bees, man. You just gotta leave them alone as much as you can. But uh, you can see here, though, they're all finding their way back into the hive. They're, they were all clumped up down there. Now they're working their way up here, finding the trail, following the scent, and they're all slowly getting back into the hive, which is good. And this small entrance seems to be working out. They're ventilating it a bit, but they're not crowded. Not, not, no, nothing close to what the, how crowded they are up here. So now they've got this hole, this hole, and even another hole on top. Plus this ventilation. This is a solid bottom board, but they've got this ventilation here. So that's, I think they're in good shape. And uh, holy moly, it's a lot of bees. <clears throat> Let's see if I get the... I'm shooting this with my video camera, my fake GoPro, and my uh, phone. Holy man. So yeah, this is a, I think this hive is doing well. Yeah, you can still see they're, they're finding their way home. Coming up here, they're going, hey, what was going on? Hey, everybody. And then they're going, doo -doo 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 -doo, and they're finding this is the only way to connect. Oh, okay. stung. And they're going right up here, and then gradually, we got, gradually finding the way in, and right there, anyway, I'm in here. Alright, here's a quick look at the hive. It's about 12 o'clock, not 12 o'clock, it's about 5 o'clock right now. And they seem uh, much less busy, which is good. You can see down here. They're uh, crowding the bottom entrance and they're ventilating a little bit, but it's not going crazy. So I think I'm going to leave it like that. And up here, we have uh, several entrances for them. And uh, they're not crowding either one of them. And they got a ventilation box up top. So they're, they're good. Let's see what it's like tomorrow at uh, noon, if they're going crazy or not. But anyway, mission accomplished, I hope. Okay, and this is a shot of um, me doing some beekeeping from the perspective of my chickens. Uh, they had, I had a chicken coop. I still have a chicken coop, or yeah, chicken coop, but uh, there's no chickens anymore because every predator in the area had a field day on those chickens. So I just have, I've given up on that, but it was fun having them around for a little while. And this is a, uh, it is what it is. You can see it's a ant pulling a dead bee somewhere looking for a place to chow down and have a have breakfast on a bee I guess but uh, anyway you can see that 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 tiny little ant is just holding onto that leg of that dead bee and uh, I'm glad I'm, I'm explaining what's obviously in front of us right now and this is a footage of slow motion footage of um, of a honeybee fooling around with some fireweed and it's the the resolution is a bit low. I can tell it's it's uh, it was copied from something else or rendered in another way. Anyway, I I don't I probably didn't use this uh, in my fireweed posts about honeybees on fireweed because again this is slow. There's a lot of slow motion jittery playback in this, and it it looks good and it would have been great. But when you've got certain standards, you want to stick to them and you don't want to have crappy footage in the thing. Anyway, this is great. So uh, this is the end of July 17. 2017 and uh what's going to happen in august with my one hive stay tuned if you dare okay uh, that's it